Hey, I'm Justin, this is my brother-in-law Jim, and we're gonna teach you how to play the game set, and we're gonna give you a rules variation that we use whenever you got one player that's a little bit more experienced or quicker than everybody else, and you wanna keep it fun for everybody. Now let's look at the table. Each card has four main attributes to pay attention to. The first one is the number. So as you can see, we've got either one, two, or three shapes. The second thing to pay attention to is the color. We have green, red, or purple. The third attribute is the shape. They come either as squiggles, diamonds, or ovals. And the final attribute is the shading, either solid, outlined, or shaded. All right, so we've got those four attributes, and now we need to define what it means to be a set. So a set is when you have three cards that for each one of those four attributes that we just talked about, either they all match, such as all of the cards being green, or they're all different such as all of the cards having a different number. So for the other two attributes, shape, in this case, they're all the same. And for shading, they're all the same. So this is a set. It's kind of like how we're all the same, but we're all different, right? Exactly. So if we look at these three cards, when you look at the color, they're all the same. When you look at the number, they're all different. Good so far. When you look at the shape, they're all the same. But when you look at the shading, two of them match, and one is different. So basically you can't have an attribute where you have two the same and one different. Exactly. Let's try an example of figuring out what the third card needed would be find a set. So if you have these two cards, the number is the same. So the third missing card that we're going to need will have to match. It'll have to be one. Okay, so we need one of something. Of something. When we look at color, these two cards match. So the third would have to be green also, right? So we need a one green of something. The shapes of these two do not match, so we need the third shape. We already have a squiggle and a diamond. So, so we need the oval then. Right, so we need one green oval, and the shadings are different. So the third one is going to have to be empty. So we need a green, single, empty oval would be the third card in this particular set. I was gonna be impressed, I thought you had that one ready to go. Nope. So this is the card that would complete this set. All right, I think I got it, but one more example might be helpful. We have the same first card, but this time we have two red striped ovals is the second card. For number, they do not match, so the last card has to be the number that we don't see yet, which is three. For color, they do not match, so it will have to be the color that we don't see, so it'll be a three purple. For shape, they also do not match, and we don't have a diamond yet, and for shading, they do not match. So in this case, the final card is the one where no attributes match anything of the first two cards. Nice. Set. Set. Okay, great. So we know what a set is. We can identify those. We know what the attributes are. Now let's jump into the gameplay. How do we actually play this game? So what you're gonna do is take your cards and shuffle them. You'll deal out 12 cards in a grid. All of the players simultaneously look at the grid and try and find a set. There's no turns. Everyone just looks to see when they can spot one. And when you see one, you shout, set. Set. Dang. Nice. I hadn't found one yet. I spotted one here with these three uh, cards. They're all purple. They all have a different number. They all have different shadings. And they're all diamonds. So now I'll collect those three cards, set them in front of myself to score a point, And then someone will deal out three replacement cards into the grid. Set. We've got these three right here. All right, so I'll take these <laughs> all tied up. Let's deal out some replacements. Had you seen that one already? Set. These three cards. So we'll keep doing this, finding sets and replacing these until what happens? Until we have exhausted the entire deck. What happens if there's 12 cards out here, but there is no set, or at least we can't find a set? So if it happens that all of the players agree they can't find a set from the 12 cards that are showing, then you just will take three additional cards from the top of the deck and lay them out so that you have 15 showing, at which point the odds are very, very high that there is a set amongst the remaining cards. If all of the players still agree that they can't find one with a 15, then you go ahead and deal out three more to 18. But usually you can find one at this point. Um, set. So at this point, we remove that set 
but we keep playing with the 12 cards that are still showing, and we don't deal out a replacement until somebody else spots another set. Set. So we go through that and we find all the sets, adding cards back in as we find sets. We get to the end and whoever has the most sets is the winner, right? That's basically it. There's a few other things, which is that officially, according to the rules, if somebody shouts set and then they can't actually find one, they're supposed to have a penalty of one point applied. Most groups that I've played in don't usually use this penalty and just use social pressure of please don't do that. <laughs> and play sort of nicely. So house rule number one, if you're not super cutthroat, don't give the penalty for misidentifying a set. Just go for it. All right, so let's play the rest of this game. We'll show you how the end of the game works. So it looks like at this point, there's no set left. Um, if there is a set left, this is gonna be embarrassing when we put this up on YouTube. That's true. So now we'll just count up and see uh, who won. So you've got 15 and I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, good game, Jim. Good game. Uh, one more thing we want to talk about, though, is a house rule that we have sometimes. Yeah, so you can just wait until you have spotted two sets before you'll call set. So anytime before you call it, you have to have spotted two. They're allowed to be overlapping, so sometimes that means that you have one in reserve that you break up when you take a set off the table. But if they're not overlapping, then you might remove three and then get some new cards and still have that reserve set that you know about that you can uh, use to wait before you call the next one. Gotcha. So there you have it. That's how you play set. And uh, go out and have fun playing set. All right. All right, good. Now we have something for the end of the video. <laughs> Credit scene. <laughs>